everybody and welcome to the first afternoon session. Um, the first speaker of the, this session is Dian Fu from MIT. And uh, I will change a little bit, so he will be speaking about odd parity, pneumatic superconductivity, and dope topological inferiority. Okay, um, so thank you. Uh, so I'd like to first uh, thank the organizers for inviting me. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, superconductivity in uh, doped topological insulators, uh, in particular copper doped bismuth selenide and uh, uh, closely related compounds. Uh, so I'll describe some uh, recent uh, experimental and uh, theoretical progress that uh, gave strong uh, evidence that the superconductivity in these systems are quite unconventional, uh, that the pairing uh, order parameter is uh, order parity and uh, uh, anisotropic spontaneously breaking the uh, symmetry of the crystal. So uh, that's why we call this uh, odd parity and pneumatic superconductivity. So um, let me first acknowledge my collaborators. So I started working in this uh, direction uh, in collaboration with Eris Burke. Uh, that was more than uh, six years ago when we were both at Harvard. And uh, since then, uh, collaboration with uh, Karen Michelli, uh, who is here. And the recent work is done uh, with my student, uh, Vlad Cozy, and uh, uh, postdoc uh, Jan Vanderbos at MIT. And I've benefited a lot from uh, discussions uh, with uh, Yoji Endo uh, on the experiments. So, um, so in condensed matter physics, uh, uh, in, uh, we are uh, some very often interested in uh, macroscopic quantum phenomena. And uh, the two primary examples of macroscopic quantum states are topological states and uh, Sunatin states. And uh, for a long time, it was thought that they were very different. Topological states, for example, uh, realized in a two-dimensional electron gas in a high magnetic field, uh, the quantum Hall effect, integer and fractional version. And these occur uh, in high quality uh, semiconductors. Uh, on the other hand, uh, summating states, they occur in uh, very complex, uh, generally complex uh, quantum materials. Um, however, the gap between topological and summating states has been uh, uh, breached. Uh, in the last uh, few years, uh, thanks to uh, advances in our understanding. Uh, on the topological side, we now know that uh, interesting topological states, such as topological insulators, can occur in a wide variety of quantum materials. And uh, on the Sunatin side, uh, we uh, sort of revisited some early ideas about the topology of uh, paired uh, states. Uh, superfluid helium uh, is a primary example of a, a P wave uh, superfluid uh, has interesting uh, phase diagram, and they have interesting topological features. So, uh, so this sort of leads to the connection between the two areas, and uh, from which the concept of topological matter uh, has em emerged. And let, let me first look at this uh, superfluid helium-3. Uh, it was recognized uh, from quite early on by uh, Volovic and uh, uh, other people that uh, there is a topological aspect to this uh, P-wave uh, superfluid that's uh, very different from an S-wave superfluid or superconductor. And uh, this is uh, the P-wave order parameter. It's a spin triplet, and uh, uh, the so-called D-vector uh, tells uh, the direction of the uh, spin of the Cooper pair. And uh, the D-vector is an odd function of K, and in the case of the P-wave, it's uh, uh, proportional to K. And uh, so the topology uh, of the superfluid helium-3 is sort of encoded in uh, the D vector in momentum space. And uh, this, uh, for example, in the so-called A phase, um, the D vector is uh, uniaxial in the spin space. It's always pointing up in the spin space. But uh, it's a complex uh, function of uh, the momentum, kx plus i, ky. So um, this leads to a winding number uh, if we go around the origin uh, in k space. And this winding number is an example of a topological index. In the uh, B phase, uh, the uh, D vector is actually a three-dimensional vector, and it, uh, the direction of the spin uh, in, uh, of the Cooper pair uh, is given by the momentum, by the direction of the momentum. So this leads to a, a Skirmian configuration uh, on the three on the, uh, on the, on the uh, Fermi surface of a three-dimensional system. The D vector themselves form uh, a, a hedgehog. And again, uh, these hedgehogs are uh, topological uh, quantities uh, in K space. So we see that uh, there are interesting topological uh, properties associated with the uh, pairing uh, order parameter uh, in K space. And uh, this idea of topology has uh, recently been uh, made uh, much more precise and much more general. Okay? So really, the topology here 
uh, is not restricted to a, a single band system uh, with P wave uh, pairing, but it can be defined for arbitrary band structure, arbitrary uh, pairing order parameter. And it is now understood that the uh, A phase of the superfluid helium uh, is a time reversal breaking phase that is the summating analog of the quantum Hall states. Uh, and the B phase is a time reversal invariant summating analog of topological insulators. So just like uh, we talk about topology of insulators, one can also talk about topology of uh, simulators in a very uh, general setting. And uh, mathematically, uh, the full classification of topological simulators uh, within the BCS theory has been uh, worked out uh, a, a few years back. And uh, so in BCS, uh, mean field theory, we describe the smutting state uh, using the uh, bogolubo dejan Hamiltonian. Uh, it's written in this matrix form. The diagonal part describes the band structure, uh, and the off-diagonal term describes the pairing gap. So the uh, topological invariant is encoded, fully encoded in this bogolubo dejan Hamiltonian uh, as a function of momentum k. So uh, I'm not going to give the uh, you know, form of the invariance, but here are the results obtained uh, by these people. Uh, in particular, the topological property uh, depends crucially on the symmetry of the system. Uh, so there are two uh, important symmetries, uh, time reversal symmetry and the spin rotation symmetry. Uh, for example, uh, most of the symmetries, the S-wave spin, spin single symmetries form into uh, this class. The last one, it's time reversal invariant and the spin rotation invariant. Whereas uh, the first uh, uh, row here, uh, time reversal breaking, uh, spin non-rotationally invariant system, and depending on these two symmetries, uh, we have different uh, classifications in different uh, spatial dimensions. So, um, so this is a very nice result. So uh, the question is, uh, can we uh, find uh, physical realizations of topological matters uh, in real materials? So this is uh, a goal of, uh, of our uh, research. Um, so what we'd like is that uh, we first uh, need to formulate a criterion for topological matters. So the classification gives us general results, but it doesn't uh, tell us uh, what properties make a matter topological. So we need to formulate criterions in terms of material properties. Uh, we need to come up with models, and then identify materials, and then uh, propose uh, experiments. So let me uh, first describe this criterion for topological matter, and uh, I'm going to focus on one particular class. Uh, this is a time reversal invariant uh, summating uh, states. And uh, th th in this class, actually, in all three spatial dimensions, one, two, three, there are non-trivial topological summators. And, um, and we also know uh, one realization of such a state, uh, not in summator, but in, uh, in a superfluid helium. This is the, the, the B phase, okay? A time reversal spin non-rotational invariant state. Now, the, um, uh, we, we found that the key requirement for such a time reversal invariant topological matter is actually quite simple. It can be stated in simple terms. Uh, the key requirement is that the uh, summating order parameter uh, has to be, uh, have odd parity, uh, delta k equal uh, minus delta minus k. Okay? It's an odd function of momentum k. And, and indeed, if, for example, if we look at superfluid helium, uh, the order parameter is P wave, so it satisfies this, this criterion. So, um, so the, uh, the reason that this odd parity pairing is crucial uh, can be understood uh, uh, in this uh, using an intuitive argument. So uh, the, the, if we have an order parity order parameter, uh, it has to vanish when uh, at k equals zero. Okay. So and the, so this means that there is a phase transition, the gap closing phase transition between the BCS regime and the BEC regime. Okay. Because this uh, transition is described uh, in BCS theory as uh, the lowering of the chemical potential uh, from the BCS side uh, till it hits the bottom of the band and then drops below, okay? So um, when the chemical potential is below the bottom of the band, this describes a strongly bound Cooper pair. This is in the BEC regime. And this regime is always topologically trivial uh, because there's no uh, quasi-particle, uh, no uh, gapless quasi-particle excitations uh, anywhere in the system, neither in the bulk nor on the boundary. So the BEC, BEC regime, by definition, is topologically trivial. Um, now, in the case of the odd parity pairing, the BCS side and BEC side, uh, at the transition point, the quasi-particle uh, excitation uh, has a zero gap at uh, the k, k equals zero. Okay, this is precisely because the order parameter vanishes there. 
So this says there's a uh, genuine phase transition between the BCS side and the BEC side. And since we know the BEC side is uh, trivial, the BCS side is non-trivial, topology non-trivial. Okay. And uh, this, this uh, situation here is uh, very different uh, from the case of uh, even parity, such as S-wave pairing. In that case, the uh, sweating gap stays finite uh, at the crossover between BCS and BEC. So that's why, in that case, there's no phase transition between BCS and BEC. It's a smooth crossover. And that's why, in that case, in the even parity case, both the BCS side and the BEC side are topologically trivial. Um, OK, so, so this can be uh, formulated more precisely. Uh, I um, don't uh, go to the details here. But the uh, a crucial uh, result is that time reversal invariant topology matter necessarily requires odd parity pairing. OK, so even parity pairing is uh, guaranteed to be non-topological. Yes? If there is no inversion symmetry in the system, then? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so this criterion is for inversion symmetry system. For inversion non-symmetry system, there's a simple extension. So in that case, the odd parameter is a mixture of even parity and odd parity pairing. If the odd parity pairing dominates, then it's topological. Otherwise, it's non-topological. Yes? Good one. Yes? You're right. So we can start with the limit where k is a good quantum number. And then we define its topological class. After that, we introduce weak disorder. The topological invariant stays the same. Yeah. OK, so, um, so the in parity pairing is non-topological, but all parity is generically topological. Okay. So um, now, uh, the study of all parity symmetries actually has a, a long history. And again, uh, the inspiration uh, came from the superfluid helium-3. This is the phase diagram as a function of temperature and the pressure. And you see that in the large region of the uh, temperature pressure range, there is this time reversal invariant uh, B phase, uh, which is a topological symmetry, a time reversal invariant topological superfluid. And uh, in this uh, small parameter range, there's also a time reversal breaking uh, A phase. Okay. Now, uh, the uh, Odd parity symmetries has also been uh, long sought after. And uh, in electronic systems, the, there's a, uh, a lot of uh, uh, supporting evidence that the heavy fermion compound uh, uranium platinum uh, contains, uh, is, is an odd parity symmetry. And experimentally, uh, uh, the, the presence of multiple symmetric phases has been very well established. Um, I'll come back to this uh, later. And also, uh, there's a lot of evidence that the strontium ruthenate nate is an odd parity symmetry. Now, in both of these cases, actually, the uh, quasi-particle gap is not uh, full, that there are uh, line nodes. So that complicates the analysis of topology. Um, and also, in both cases, uh, the, the symmetry states, at least uh, in the large part of the phase diagram, are actually time reversal breaking. Okay, so we'd like to search for a time reversal invariant odd parity uh, topological symmetry. So this brings me uh, to uh, the main uh, sort of uh, uh, part of this talk. So we um, would like to propose that uh, there's a new venue to search for odd parity matter in the material parameter space. This is to uh, focus on materials with very strong spin orbit coupling, where the spin orbit strength is comparable to the Fermi energy. So, um, so the, um, let me first uh, sort of. Uh, show you that the spin-orbit coupling really introduces a, a new twist to the physics of odd parity pairing. So uh, without spin-orbit coupling, the odd parity pairing uh, is equivalent to spin-triplet pairing. Uh, this is because of the uh, poly uh, exclusion statistics that if the spatial part of the wave function is anti-symmetric, the spin part of the wave function of Gruber pair has to be symmetric. And uh, so that's why people devote a lot of efforts to search for triplet pairing. And that is tend to uh, occur near a strong magnetic uh, instability driven by magnetic fluctuations. Now, uh, with strong spin orbit coupling, uh, the situation is very different. In this case, the energy bands are still doubly degenerate due to the inversion symmetry. But the wave function of the uh, block states are no longer spin eigenstates, uh, but they are strongly spin and orbital uh, entangled. And in this case, uh, I'll show that the odd parity pairing is more general than spin triplet. I yeah, will show cases where spin singlet pairing is also odd parity. And uh, I'll also show that odd parity symmetry can occur uh, without magnetic fluctuations. So, so it can occur in a uh, much uh, broader class of materials. 
So, um, so let me uh, focus on this example, a copper doped bismuth selenide. So, uh, so this uh, material was discovered uh, in 2010 by a covers group in Princeton University. So by doping copper, uh, the carry density was raised to uh, about 10 to the 20th, uh, and uh, bulk superconductivity was achieved. So this is a true uh, bulk matter. Um, and uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, material um, effort uh, by Yu Chiando's group and uh, uh, leads to uh, uh, zero resistance states a year later. And uh, uh, the specific heat uh, is consistent with a full sumatin gap. Um, so th you have heard uh, from yesterday's talk, there's a very beautiful uh, uh, study of the characterization of the normal state by both angle result photo emission spectroscopy and uh, quantum oscillation measurement uh, from uh, Yoran's uh, group. Um, and uh, so here we see that uh, with copper doping, the Fermi energy lies in the conduction band of bismuth selenide. Uh, there's only a, a single uh, band uh, at Fermi energy in the bulk. And uh, uh, from the quantum oscillation measurement, it was found that the Fermi surface evolves from three-dimensional closed pocket to an open cylinder uh, as the electron doping uh, increases. So this is very important, and we'll come back to that later. So um, to uh, so let me now describe sort of how the strong spin orbit coupling enters into this material's band structure. So this, um, the parent compound, bismuth selenide, has been very well studied. It's a topological insider, it's got a lot of interest. The unit cell consists of five layers, and the uh, conduction and valence bands near the Fermi energy, they are made of uh, two orbitals within the unit cell. Uh, those are orbitals localized in the top and bottom layer of the unit cell. So I'm going to label, label these two orbitals using sigma z. Okay, sigma z equal one and minus one correspond to these two orbitals. And um, interestingly, you see uh, in, even the, the system is inverging symmetric around uh, the middle uh, layer. Uh, locally, each uh, top and the bottom layer uh, sits in the inverging asymmetric environment. So for example, uh, for this top layer here, there's an internal electric field uh, pointing up. And for the bottom layer here, there's an internal electric field pointing down. So this local inversion asymmetry leads to a local Rashba spin orbit interaction. Uh, so KXSY minus KYSX. And this uh, Rashba spin orbit strength uh, takes opposite sign for the top and bottom layers. So that's where the sigma Z enters. And so this is the form of the spin orbit interaction. It's a staggered Rashba spin orbit coupling. And um, the rest part of this Hamiltonian uh, just comes from the interlayer hopping, okay, uh, within the unit cell and between different unit cells. So this naturally leads to the uh, relativistic uh, Dirac Hamiltonian. Okay? So it's derived entirely from symmetry considerations. And, uh, and uh, let me just add that uh, uh, these are orbitals are actually precursors of the topological surface states. So when we consider a whole stack of these uh, unicells, the uh, orbitals on the top, on the outmost uh, unicells, they become the topological surface states on the top and bottom layer and they naturally inherit this kind of uh, spin texture, uh, Rashba-like spin texture. Um, okay, so now, yeah? You also have the on the other surface. Yeah, that one has opposite the spin texture, right? So the sigma z take uh, opposite sign. No, I mean on the other, on the side. On the side, you mean on the side surface. surface. Yeah, 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 that, it, it, it will work out. But with this simple, um, it will work out, yes. So in other words, you can literally take a model starting from these, um, these, uh, this two orbital uh, model per unit cell and ad hoc in between unit cells. And you can realize this 3D topological band structure. Yeah, so, so this is gonna be uh, the basis of our um, study. So we, this is basically the Hamiltonian that, this is the low energy Hamiltonian that describes the band structure of copper doped bismuth selenide, including crucially the spin orbit coupling. So uh, the next step is to classify the uh, uh, smelting order parameters so, um, so we uh, list all possible order parameters that are available uh, for short range pairing interactions. So uh, again, the one and two corresponds to these two orbitals uh, on the unit cell. So we have a pairing, uh, intra-orbital pairing forming a spin singlet. We have uh, inter-orbital pairing that can either be spin singlet or spin triplet. So this leads to in total four different types of uh, pairing order parameters and they uh, belong to different symmetry channels. Um, 
And for example, this uh, so inter this uh, intra orbital spin singular pairing with opposite uh, sign, uh, this actually leads to an odd pattern pairing. Okay, so because uh, the inversion center uh, is uh, in between the two layers. Uh, so uh, if we have a singular, spin singular pairing, but with opposite uh, phase, with a phase difference of pi, this order parameter change sign on the inversion. So this is an example of an odd pattern pairing uh, without triplet. It, it occurs uh, in, in the case in this model, it's a singular pairing. But due to the sign change, it realizes an odd pattern pairing. And um, or one can uh, work out a simple calculation to show that this kind of a sign changing singular pairing uh, only leads to a summating gap in the presence of spin-orbit interaction. So without spin-orbit interaction, this order parameter leaves the entire Fermi surface gapless. So it's completely energetically unfavorable. So this is an example where uh, strong spin-orbit interaction adds a new twist. It allows for uh, order pattern pairing to take the form of a spin singlet. And um, so um, these, uh, there's uh, two more odd pattern pairing symmetries. Uh, the A1U pairing symmetry corresponds to uh, interorbital uh, pairing uh, with total SZ equals zero. It's up, down, plus, down, up. And then the EU pairing uh, order parameter is again interorbital pairing, but uh, with a non-zero total SZ. So it's up, up, or down, down pairing, or their superposition. So um, now which pairing symmetry is realized? Uh, we don't know much about the microscopic details of the uh, pairing interaction, but this parent phase, the bismuth selenide, is not a strongly correlated material at all. It's a semiconductor, and uh, there's numerous studies by photoemission, by transport, and, and we know these properties uh, pretty well. And so we think that the parent interaction most likely come from uh, electron phonon interaction, and uh, electron phonon interaction is short range in real space. So we take uh, this phenomenological model, because there are two orbitals, so we have intraorbital attraction, and the interorbital attraction with uh, strengths we call U and V. And um, just doing the standard BCS theory, but in this multi-orbital system uh, with an interesting band structure, strong spin orbit coupled, uh, we, we find an interesting uh, result that uh, when the uh, interactions are attractive, the pairing interaction is generated in all odd parity channels. Okay? So this is um, uh, very uh, 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 different from uh, uh, the, the systems with no spin-orbit coupling. Um, and so the, so the fact that you know, even electron phonon interaction can generate uh, attractive interaction in odd pattern channel in this uh, mo uh, model, it, it, it comes from the strong spin-orbit entanglement in the wave function. So basically, um, we can write down all this effective interaction uh, in the ba basis of the energy bands at Fermi energy. Because the block states are spin-orbit entangled, the effective interaction would also become uh, pseudo spin dependent, or depend on, uh, on uh, the, um, the pseudo spin basically labels the, the two degenerate states at Fermi energy. And, and this is uh, pseudo spin dependent effective interaction that uh, makes it possible to have odd pairing interaction. Okay? And um, within this particular model, we find that one odd pair pairing, delta two, uh, is realized in a large range in the parameter space, and uh, the vertical axis is characterized as the strength of the spin orbit interaction. So um, as the spin orbit strength in, uh, increases, the parameter space for odd pattern pairing enlarges. Okay? So the general message is that the odd parity spin activity can arise from electron phonon interaction uh, in uh, strongly spin orbit coupled systems. Okay? And, and for this to work, we really need a strong spin orbit. The strength of spin orbit should be comparable to Fermi energy, uh, which is this limit here. Okay, okay and uh, um, so, Experimenters got interested uh, in this material, and uh, uh, a few years back, there are two uh, studies of uh, surface of copper doped bismuth selenide aiming to look for uh, NGF surface states. So, as I said, all the pair pairing uh, should lead to a topological matter. So, the natural, uh, um, uh, it is na they're natural to look for these uh, surface states. And the results from con point contact study and STM study are, are very uh, conflicting. So there's a zero bias peak seen in point of contact experiments, but STM sees a beautiful uh, full gap. So um, I'll come back to this, uh, uh, this uh, contradiction uh, later. So one of the great things about topological matter is that uh, in order for it to be topological, the bulk has to be um, odd pattern pairing. So there's interesting physics in the bulk. So 
in view of these conflicting results on the surface, it's uh, really important to search for direct test of the parent symmetry in the bulk. Okay. That's, and, uh, and very recently, uh, one of the experiments has been carried out. This is the NMR experiment uh, from uh, Guo Qingzhen's group uh, in Japan. And um, this is selenium NMR. And um, so here's the, the night shift as a function of temperature in the normal state and in the sunlighting state. And uh, the most uh, remarkable result is the following, that when the uh, magnetic field is uh, applied, magnetic field is rotated in the AB plane of the uh, crystal, the night shift shows a very anisotropic response, okay, along different directions, in-plane directions of the magnetic field. So uh, there's a uniaxial anisotropy, and this is plotted here, uh, so a full two pi scan of the uh, direction in the AB plane, the night shift shows a drop along a particular axis in both positive and negative directions, 180 degrees apart from each other. And in the normal state, above TC, the spin susceptibility is uh, isotropic. Okay? So this tells us immediately that the sunlighting state spontaneously breaks the threefold symmetry of the crystal. Okay? And uh, so now we look at all these pairing order parameters uh, that I described before. Uh, there's only one order parameter which allows for such rotation symmetry breaking in the sunlighting state, and this is the delta four pairing. So this pairing, uh, unlike all others, it uh, involves two components. Okay, what this means is that the most general order parameter in this channel is a linear superposition of these two components, and uh, and Generally, these multi-component order parameter allows for uh, symmetry breaking. The sunlighting state not only breaks the U1 symmetry, the gauge symmetry, but also break crystal symmetry. So this is uh, possible only when the order parameter is multi-component. And within this list, there's only one such symmetry channel. Okay. So, um, so this is why the rotation symmetry breaking is only compatible with this two-dimensional EU order parameter, um, and also, the fact that the uh, spin susceptibility becomes anisotropic, it also implies that um, the, the spin of the Cooper pair is locked to the lattice uh, instead of the applied field, okay, right? So, um, and this is only possible due to the spin-orbit interaction. In the absence of spin-orbit interaction, in for triplet pairing, the spin of the Cooper pair would follow the magnetic field, so that as the field rotates, the summating order parameter also rotates with it that will restore the rotational symmetry in the measurement. And that is believed to be, for example, what's happening in strong team Rusnit, that people don't find any change in night shift uh, irrespective of the direction of the magnetic field. So here, the situation is, 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 is fundamentally different. So I should mention that this behavior, this, this anisotropic NMR night shift has never been seen in any other swim okay. okay, so um, so again, this is, remind, remind you that what's delta four pairing is interorbital pairing. Uh, with total SZ equal either one or minus one, okay? So now if we take the, uh, we can take a, a, a basis function for this delta four pairing uh, as uh, up, up, plus, down, down, and up, up, minus, down, down. And these two, uh, this is just a basic change of basis. Uh, and in this basis, the order parameter uh, become a two component vector. So they rotate in, phi one and phi two rotate into each other, uh, just like the XY components of a vector. Now, the most general form of the order parameter in the supermagnetic states below TC is the superposition of phi one and phi two. If the superposition is real, the order parameter is a real superposition of the two components, then we have a time reversal invariant state, okay, because the order parameter is real. But uh, this order parameter uh, picks a particular direction, right, given by theta, uh, so it breaks rotation symmetry. So this is uh, what uh, leads to uh, rotation symmetry breaking uh, in uh, NMR. So this leads to uh, this kind of rotation symmetry breaking. Uh, we, we call it a pneumatic matter. Um, as I'll show you later, this is a new state of matter that has no analog in helium-3, no analog in existing, in other known uh, sumatters so far. Now, um, one thing uh, that's interesting here is that uh, the sumatting order parameter phi one, phi two themselves are odd on the inversion, they change the sign on the spatial inversion, uh, but we call it a pneumatic, okay? Pneumatic usually is associated with headless vector that uh, is a uh, invariant on the rotation. Uh, the, this terminology here is for the following reason. 
uh, the symmetric order primes are phi and minus phi. They differ only by an overall phase, and they actually correspond to the same symmetric state. Uh, and this can be seen explicitly from the BCS wave function for a fixed number of electrons. Uh, this is the uh, wave function. And we can see that changing delta to minus delta does not change the state. So this uh, is why we call it an odd parity pneumatic state. Okay? And this is only possible uh, when the pneumatic order prime arises from superconductivity. Okay? Um, now, another com superposition, the complex superposition of the two components, phi 1 plus i phi 2 or phi 1 minus i phi 2, this state, uh, spontaneous break time rule symmetry, but it's rotationally invariant. So this, is a, a, w this would be a chiral symmetry. And experiments point to the pneumatic symmetry for copper doped bismuth selenide. And actually, the, uh, the comparison between theory and experiment can be made more precise. Actually, two years before the NMR experiment, there's a theoretical calculation uh, by, by uh, these authors in Japan. And uh, they took the uh, four different order parameters and uh, they calculated the uh, spin uh, susceptibility in the symmetric states. So the red and the blue curves are for the case of a three-dimensional Fermi surface and for the case of a, a cylinder-like two-dimensional Fermi surface. Okay? And there's, uh, as far as I know, there's no free parameters. Uh, because the Hamiltonian is given, the order primary is also given. And, uh, and, in, you know, uh, and again, uh, the delta-4 pairing is the only one that gives anisotropic response in the x and y direction. And, and you see that this results um, uh, agree quite well with, with these with this, um, uh, experiments. So this, again, gives us a strong evidence that the uh, uh, NMR results points to this delta-4 pairing in bismuth selenide carbon. Now, um, this uh, rotation symmetry breaking uh, in superconducting state is actually quite rare. Um, so for example, in this other odd parity symmetry, uranium platinum, the, uh, this is a phase diagram. There are multiple symmetric phases. The majority of the phase uh, uh, at a, a zero magnetic field, the B phase, is time reversal uh, breaking, spontaneous time reversal breaking, and rotation invariant. So this is actually a chiral state instead of a pneumatic state. For example, if you look at the thermal conductivity uh, as a, a function of the uh, angle in the basal plane, uh, it's uh, featureless. Okay? It's rotationally invariant. And um, more recently, Aaron Capitunio's group has uh, done a curl rotation measurement in the B phase and uh, found a time reversal breaking signature okay? the onset in the B phase. So, so basically, this, these results make it very clear that the B phase is actually a chiral state instead of a pneumatic state. And there's a very narrow uh, uh, parameter range, the so-called A phase, that is believed to break rotation symmetry. However, there's evidence that this state actually coexists with an antiferromagnetic state. And in that case, it will be time reversal breaking as well. Uh, and also, uh, there are some doubts whether the order parameter is really odd parity or even parity okay, due to the presence of uh, line nodes. It's not supposed to be there for odd parity pairing. Okay. So in any case, the phase diagram of uranium planet 3 does not have a time reversal invariant rotation breaking uh, state. And for the case of the other odd parity matter, strontium ruthenate, the uh, superconducting state is spontaneous break time reversal symmetry again. So it's also a chiral state. So, so why is pneumatic state so rare? Okay? And why is that, uh, what's the relation between pneumatic and chiral state? This can be understood um, from the Landau Ginsburg theory uh, for two component order parameter. Uh, so again, I write eta 1, eta 2 as the two uh, components, like x and y components of the order parameter. Then uh, the form of the Lanage uh, theory uh, is, again, dictated by symmetry considerations. So uh, up to fourth order, these are all the allowed terms. And uh, there's a crucial term, B2, here. The sign of the B2 determines whether the smelting state is rotation symmetry breaking or time rule symmetry breaking. Okay? In one case, it leads to pneumatic. In the other case, it leads to chiral. Um, we'll come back to the microscopic origin of this term uh, later. And um, yeah, here, here it is. Yeah. So OK, so um, the coefficients of the landau ginsburg theory actually can be derived uh, from a microscopic uh, BCS theory. So uh, within the weak coupling analysis, we can write the uh, general order parity order parameter in the uh, band basis. Again, we use this d-vector notation. Uh, d-vector tells us the orientation of the uh, pseudo spin. Uh, relative to, uh, uh, as a function of momentum. So, so we found that actually the, this crucial coefficient B2 can be uh, written entirely using the uh, average of uh, Fermi surface. 
how the, the D vectors of the two components, uh, the cross product and the inner product, average over the framing surface. So if we take the two orbital model for copper dobe senite and use a delta phi order parameter, uh, we obtain the D vector of this form. And uh, doing this calculation get, tells us that the B2 is uh, positive, and that favors this pneumatic state. And more generally, uh, pneumatic state is favored by non-collinear uh, D vectors. And uh, these uh, non-collinear uh, non -collinear D vectors actually generally come from spin-orbit interaction. So this is why spin-orbit coupling enables all parallel pneumatic state. And one can actually make a comparison. Uh, in the absence of spin-orbit interaction, then the D vector is free to rotate in spin space. So the general form of the order parameter is given by this. The G1, G2 uh, is, tells us the orbital part of the Cooper pair wave function, it's, you know, for example, Px and Py-like, whereas uh, in addition, there's a uh, vector coefficients, which uh, the vector uh, specifies the orientation in the spin space, cos E1, cos E2. And again, in lana ginsburg theory, there's this complicated form of the free energy. But generically, with no spin of interaction, it, uh, the coefficients are interrelated to each other. And you see that the crucial term here, the B5 and B6, are all positive. And in that case, uh, this leads to uh, a rotational invariant state, uh, such as the B phase. Okay. So without spin orbit interaction, the pneumatic state is, is disfavored, okay. at least within the weak coupling theory. Okay, so um, the next question is what, uh, how, uh, what direction does this symmetric order parameter choose? And uh, here, uh, there are two possibilities. Um, so first, we know that this uh, uh, symmetric order parameter eta 1 eta 2, they generate a uh, secondary or subsidiary pneumatic order, which is given by the bilinear of the order parameter, an example of a composite order parameter. And uh, this composite order parameter actually uh, couples uni uh, linearly to uniaxial strain. Okay, this is what the pneumatic does, right? A pneumatic break rotation symmetry and couple to strain. And, and here, the pneumatic order parameter uh, is a bilinear of the symmetric order parameter. It's a, a secondary order parameter. And then um, in the pristine crystal, the three-fold rotation symmetry of the crystal, it allows a uh, six-fold, uh, six-order term in the uh, free energy, which is given by this. And essentially, uh, the sign of this term selects uh, the easy axis for the uh, pneumatic order parameter in the AB plane. Okay. And alternatively, um, if there's some uniaxial strain, small residue strain in the system, uh, then uh, these uh, uniaxial strain acts as a symmetry breaking field and they couple linearly to this uh, pneumatic order parameter. And this term uh, directly selects the uh, orientation of the uh, pneumatic order parameter. And is actually here, the bilinears of the symmetric order parameter. OK. Um, so now, uh, motivated by this experiment, experiment, we look at the gap structure of this delta-4 pairing. And uh, here, again, uh, it's crucial to include the effect of uh, crystal anisotropy. And, uh, and uh, once that is included, we find that the gap structure is very different depending on the orientation of the uh, symmetric order parameter relative to the crystal axis. Uh, when it's oriented along the x-axis, the gap has a point node okay, in the y direction. This point node is protected by the reflection symmetry of the crystal. It leads to a topological nodal symmetry. Uh, but for all the parameters oriented on the uh, y-axis, the summoning gap is actually uh, full. Uh, it leads to a time rules invariant topological symmetry. And this kind of gap anisotropy in the basal plane uh, is still waiting to be measured. OK, so um, how much time do I have? 10%. OK, OK, all right, good. OK, so, so, um, so this uh, NMR experiment gave us uh, uh, great, uh, 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 strong evidence for pneumatic order. And, uh, I would like to sort of uh, um, propose some other ways of detecting the pneumatic symmetry that's uh, perhaps easier. Um, so the pneumatic order parameter, because it breaks rotation symmetry, it leads to a basal plane anisotropy in many thermodynamic transport and spectroscopy properties. Uh, the gap anisotropy can be detected by directional tunneling, by penetration depths, by optical experiments, by angle-dependent uh, thermal conductivity uh, in the magnetic field. Uh, Again, uh, when the field is uh, applied, the vortex lattice also can show an anisotropy that can be detected by neutron scattering or STM. And uh, I'll spend some time to talk about perhaps the, the simplest way of detecting the pneumatic symmetry. 
uh, which is based on, measure, uh, uh, based on measurement of the upper critical field. Okay, so if the symmetric state is spontaneous break rotation, we, we expect there should be some anisotropy in the upper critical field. So, um, so let's look at two cases. Uh, in first, let's consider the presence of a small symmetry breaking field that pings the symmetric order parameter. And uh, again, this is how the symmetry breaking field enters. It coupled linearly to this uh, pneumatic uh, order, the bilinears of the symmetric order. And um, a very simple calculation shows that HC2 has this form as a function of angle in the basal plane. There's a temperature dependent part as an S wave matter that is rotationally variant. But then there's a, a second piece which is temperature independent near, at least near TC, there's a temperature independent piece uh, which has a two-fold symmetry, okay? So plotting this uh, HC2 as a function of angle, we get this, uh, this peanut shape, okay? Different curves correspond to uh, different magnitudes of the uh, anisotropic term, okay? So this uh, peanut shape is a direct evidence, the peanut shape of the upper critical field in the basal plane is a direct evidence for pneumatic activity. Um, and this uh, peanut shape is actually very different from uh, the case of an anisotropic S wave matter, okay? So with an, uh, with an anisotropic S wave matter, the upper critical field within Landau Ginzburg theory would have an elliptical shape, okay, instead of this elliptical shape, uh, in this, uh, instead of this pinna shape. So, so basically I'm saying that even in the presence of a symmetry breaking field, uh, the upper critical field, uh, anisotropy has a distinctive uh, feature, okay? That, that is evidence for pneumatic superactivity. Um, the, uh, the, the other, we'll consider also the other case that the crystal is actually uh, pristine, that there's a perfect three-four rotation of the crystal um, that's in this trigonal symmetry group. And in that case, um, uh, we have to include all possible uh, gradient terms in the landau ginzburg theory. And in particular, uh, there's a new term that is allowed in uh, uh, trigonal crystals with three-four symmetry but it's absent in hexagonal crystals with six-fold symmetry. And uh, after including this term, this new term, we found that the upper critical field actually shows a six-fold modulation, okay? And actually this six-fold symmetry of the HC2 is also a direct evidence of the two-component order parameter. So if we were dealing with an s waves matter, uh, even in the tri trigonal crystal, uh, we, in lambda ginzburg theory, the upper critical field is actually fully rotationally invariant. So having this uh, six-fold modulation is, uh, is uh, an evidence for the two-component order parameter, okay? Um, so um, in addition to copper doped bismuthionide, uh, recently there are two more uh, doped bismuthionide has been uh, found, uh, strontium and niobium doped, and uh, they both become matter with TC, that's uh, around two and three Kelvin, and uh, for this strontium doped bismuthionide, it has a large volume fraction, stable on the air. Uh, it has a carry density that's even smaller than copper dope is uh, an order magnitude smaller. And uh, if you remember Harold Huang's talk uh, yesterday, it's actually quite uh, uh, interesting that uh, such a low carry density system uh, can have such a high, relatively high TC of a few Kelvin. And uh, um, I think it's an interesting open question. So why these low carry density systems uh, can have such a high TC? Um, in the, for the case of niobium doped bismuthionide, uh, there's some claim that the system, co the simulating state coexists with a magnetism, uh, and uh, that may be an evidence for time reversal breaking simulating state. But I think still there's many open questions. Um, okay, then coming back to this uh, 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 point contact and STM experiment aiming to look for surface states. Um, so as we heard yesterday, one possible resolution of this paradox is that the Fermi surface is actually a cylinder, and as uh, uh, Uram's uh, uh, group mentioned. Um, and if that's the case, then the Sumatin state actually will become a, uh, with, with this delta four pairing, it will become a, a topology equivalent to a layers of 2D topological matter. And in that scenario, the uh, Andreev state will appear on the side surface. Um, that's why the tunneling STM experiment was, may see a full gap in that case. Uh, however, in point contact experiment, the junction area is much larger and they may hit terraces. And the terraces actually uh, uh, would carry a one-dimensional uh, Andreev uh, edge states. And that may lead to a 
uh, zero bias peak. But in any case, the uh, search for unreal state still continues uh, in this system. Okay, how much time? Five minutes, okay. So maybe uh, I'll just very quickly mention uh, in the last few minutes uh, some uh, recent work. Uh, the, so we see that this uh, pairing in uh, copper dope bismuth depends a lot on the spin orbit interaction in the system and uh, uh, our model, this direct model for this material is, is, is very material specific. So the question is, is there a more uh, generic mechanism for odd pair pairing in strongly spin orbit couple systems? And uh, so uh, with my student postdoc, we found that the, uh, the odd pair pairing can be generically meditated by uh, inversion symmetry breaking, uh, uh, fluctuations of in inversion symmetry breaking uh, in the strongly spin orbit couple system. So schematically, we, we, we envision such, this kind of phase diagram that uh, as a function of some tuning parameter like pressure or doping, there's an inversion breaking phase, okay? And the, the, in the vicinity of this inversion breaking phase, uh, there may be a simulating dome or with odd parity, odd parameter, okay? And um, so this inversion breaking uh, actually couples to uh, this inversion breaking order parameter actually couples to the electrons in a very unique way um, because uh, inversion order parameter is odd under inversion, even on time reversal, they generally couple to the spin currents, okay? And here, by spin, I really mean the pseudo spin that, uh, that describe the uh, spin orbit entangled uh, block states on the Fermi surface. And um, so the, um, this means that sort of, uh, and, and, and this is, uh, and the spin orbit coupling is actually crucial here. Uh, the, it enables this uh, coupling between the inversion breaking order parameter and the electron on the Fermi surface uh, with this kind of a K momentum and the pseudo spin dependent form factor. So, um, so if we take the, uh, the fluctuation of the order parameter and uh, uh, integrate out the low lying uh, bosonic fluctuations, we derive effective induction uh, for the electrons. And again, the Q is uh, the, those uh, involve these um, uh, K linear uh, and spin dependent form factors. Uh, once uh, we use this uh, effective induction, we can decompose into different ch pairing channels. And, and we find that the pairing induction is generically attractive in the odd parity channels as well. Okay, so again, this, is, uh, uh, this shows that sort of the uh, effective interaction meditated by uh, parity breaking fluctuation can generate attractive interaction in the odd parity channel. Um, and uh, uh, one uh, material that uh, may be uh, uh, interesting to look at is this perchlor oxide, cadmium rhenium oxide. And in this compound, uh, in uh, below uh, 200 Kelvin, there's an inversion breaking phase uh, with a Q equals zero order parameter and uh, at low temperature, there are multiple smelting states, and some of the smelting states has an a enormously, enormously large upper critical field that exceeds the poly limit, which again uh, may be a, a evidence for, uh, might be uh, consistent with odd parity uh, spin triplet pairing. Okay, so um, let me just summarize. Um, so basically, uh, odd parity pairing, uh, uh, they generally lead to topological matter. Uh, it's either a gapped or nodal, and it's either three-dimensional or quasi-two-dimensional. Uh, this, this material covered the bismuth selenide. Um, there's a now uh, uh, NMR evidence from the bulk that shows the uh, rotation symmetry breaking uh, consistent with the odd parity the delta four EU pairing, and the uh, odd parity pairing uh, uh, may uh, arise uh, in the vicinity of inversion breaking. And uh, so. Um, the search for topology uh, still continues. Okay, so with that, I'm going to thank you for your attention. What kind of vortex do you, do you have in mind? The, the usual vortex or? Yeah, the, the usual vortex in a, in a pneumatic 
Uh, let's see. What would be an annual I think for usual vortex, there's no Majorana because we have a spin degeneracy here, right? Mm -hmm. So there will be no Majorana, no, at least no robust Majorana. So it's not topological in that sense? Not in that sense, yes. But, but this, yeah, actually this material, yeah, actually let me, let me uh, yeah, it's good to mention this. You see, we are dealing with a time reversal invariant topological matter, not a time reversal breaking matter. So this, for example, this uh, spin polarized P plus I P state is a uh, time reversal breaking topological symmetry in class D. Yes. And we know in that case, vortex carries a single Majorana mode. But this one, is a, this one is actually a time reversal invariant. It's like a helical version. No, 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 a vortex itself break time reversal. So, so in that case, you know, unless there are some other reason, then I'll say the Majoranas are not protected in this case. However, uh, this uh, class of matters has uh, its own interesting properties. For example, there will be uh, helical edge states. Right? Instead of chiral edge states, you'll have helical edge states. Two, no. of them, yeah. Two of them, yeah. Counter propagating, and uh, they are protected by time rule symmetry. Two in each direction or two together? No, uh, counter propagating. One in each direction. One in each direction, yeah, yeah. Like, just like the TI. So it's, uh, like, it's like class D3. It's, it is D3. D3. This is D3, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Harold? Oh yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, so uh, let me first mention an experimental fact I learned from Guo Qingzhen. So uh, in this material, uh, let me show you the NR data. Yeah, uh, so these results are reproducible as you warm it up and cool it down, but it's always, in the anisotropy is always in the same direction, okay? So that's an experimental fact. Now, so this is why we think, I think that there may be a, a uh, small symmetry breaking field present that pings the order parameter. Okay. And uh, Yochi Endo actually told me that, uh, for example, in cuprates, I'm, I'm, by, far, me, by far I'm not an expert in this, but I was told that uh, in cuprates, uh, that uh, in, uh, the pneumatic order also is pinged by some uh, small uh, structural uh, asymmetry. So, yeah. Yeah, but, but this is actually a very, uh, important open question, so what really pings the pneumatic order parameter? So in theory, we can you know, deal with it in a phenomenological way by introducing a symmetry breaking field, but uh, microscopically, what is pinning the order parameter? That's, I think that's a very important open question. So, so here that the, uh, the two directions, Trisha showed you, they're symmetry related? Yes, yes, they're symmetry related. Well, I, well yeah, essentially it is. I mean, the, the, there's a three-fold symmetry relating, you know, zero degree and uh, 120 degree, but then time also relates 120 degree to minus so, 60 degree, so, yeah. But saying it's not possible to train it by cooling, by cooling in the field, say, in a certain direction, you... That, that I don't know, uh, may, may, have, may not been done, yeah. yeah. And, and the, so, yeah. by the way, let me mention that this experiment is done at a 0.7 Tesla. The upper critical field is about 2.5 Tesla, so this is actually a very small field. Yeah. yeah, that's right, that, uh, but this field is very small. So in other words, um, yes, to truly test the anisotropy requires ideally doing experiment at zero magnetic field. And that can be done, for example, by measuring the gap anisotropy, the, you know, the directional tunneling. Or one can, uh, one can uh, do experiment at uh, you know, slow, smaller and smaller field and see what happens. Yes, that's a, also a very good suggestion. Yeah. The other comment is that uh, I think that in, in this state, if you uh, if you do if you do strain, you're supposed to get the cusp in DC versus strain uh, zero, zero. Correct. Strain. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Although uh, I was told actually this material, particular material, copper the it's very uh, yeah. very uh, let's say fragile against the pressure. Okay, that's what I was told. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, so again, it's just, yeah, I was, okay, this was just a uh, very naive thinking uh, that uh, if the gap is uh, anisotropic, then the, um, the, 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 then the, uh, the penetration depth would also be anisotropic, yeah. Am I right? <laughs> anyway, yeah. 
I mean, basically, you know, when the gap is anisotropic, you know, essentially all thermodynamic and the transport property should show some anisotropy, yeah. right? Just based on symmetry consideration. So this is why I, I think this pneumatic state is actually uh, much easier to detect than, for example, you know, pinning down the D wave nature of cuprates, right? In that case, you really require phase sensitive measurements. But here, the, the magnitude of the gap itself is already anisotropic. Right. Is there any um, estimates from, from say, uh, the initial calculations, what the, the ratio of these? Like, there's actually the one, periods? yeah, there is one, uh, well, there's one paper by, um, by uh, uh, from the, uh, let's see, UC Davis group. Uh, and they actually uh, uh, did a first principle calculation of the electron fold attaching, et cetera. And they indeed find uh, submittivity in all pattern channels. I think they also found in delta two channel uh, instead of delta four channel, uh, but indeed they did find attractive interaction in the uh, in some of the parent channels. Yes, yes. I mean, I should say that uh, uh, we don't know where, where uh, at this moment you know there's. I think it's still an open question: what is the microscopic pairing interaction? Uh, you know, is it electron phonon or not? Or I'm, uh, but, but one thing I think is quite clear is that this system is not close to any magnetic instability. This copper dope is and I. And I don't think theory of very strong correlation would apply to this material. Maybe one last question. Yeah. yeah. Could you please go back to this previous slide that you were showing the, this anisotropy in the NMR? What is yes. Yeah, so uh, this uh, anisotropy, you said it's related to anisotropy of the order parameter, the superconducting one, but isn't it also consistent with the lat lattice? Uh, no, no, it's not. It, it actually is, the lattice has threefold symmetry. But this one picks a so direction. Superconducting state also associated with some structural, structural phase transition as well? No, no. Uh, so far, there's no known structural phase transition. And you can see that in the normal state, the night shift is isotropic. So um, what is happening is that the summatin state itself spontaneously breaks rotation symmetry of the crystal. And this is only possible when the summatin order parameter has two components. Um, so it's very different for, from D wave, for example. In D wave, uh, the summating state does not break the four-fold rotation symmetry. Right? It's only the phase of the Cooper pair uh, change sign on the 90 degree rotation. Right? But this overall phase change doesn't change the summating state itself. Right? So in order for a summating state to really break the symmetry of the crystal, one needs the order parameter to have multi-components. Thank you for